Hey, I'm Adam Jusko, and this is Strictly Credit Cards, where we talk about Strictly Credit Cards. Subscribe, why don't you? In this video, we're going to review the PlayStation Visa. So if you are a regular gamer and PlayStation is your console of choice, the PlayStation Visa allows you to earn rewards on your PlayStation purchases and other purchases as well. And then you can redeem those rewards for PlayStation stuff as well as other Sony reward choices as well. So let's dive in and see what you get. All right, the PlayStation Visa is a no annual fee credit card that gives you rewards using the following formula. You get five points per dollar on PlayStation store purchases, five points per dollar on purchases of PlayStation or Sony products through authorized retailers. So that basically means those products that are being sold by sort of, you know, big box stores or that kind of thing, not if you're buying used products or whatever. You would get three points per dollar if you use this card to pay for your mobile phone bills and you get one point per dollar on any other purchases that you make with the card. Back for just a second here to those five points per dollar on the PlayStation and Sony purchases that you make from authorized retailers. Now in order for uh, the PlayStation card, in order for Sony to track that, you actually have to go into your account and fill out a confirmation form, a purchase confirmation form, and give them your receipt in order to actually get credited with those. So it is not an automatic situation. There is an extra step that you have to take there, which is not ideal, but it's not really a very easy thing for them to track. So that that's kind of what you have to do. Not a big deal, you can do it online, but it is an extra step. As a new PlayStation Visa card holder, you have a bonus opportunity of 5,000 points as long as you use the card within the first 60 days of having it. No minimum to meet. You just have to use the card at least once in those first couple of months. In terms of the worth of a point in this system, in almost all cases, a point is going to be worth one penny. So 5,000 points would be worth $50 worth of merchandise or games. When we look back to the points per dollar on your individual purchases, five points per dollar, you could think of as a 5% reward, three points per dollar, 3%, one point per dollar, 1%. A couple other perks that loyal PlayStation customers might appreciate. Number one, you can get a 10% rebate on your PlayStation Now subscription if you use the PlayStation Visa to pay for it, which means you are going to get that money back on your credit card statement. So essentially it's going to be taken out. You pay for it with the card and then you get it back on your statement each month. Number two is PlayStation Plus. If you buy a 12 month membership, you will get a 50% statement credit on that, but you do have to spend $3,000 on the card within a year's time in order to qualify for that 50% rebate. So it's not really all of that great. They're asking you to spend a good amount of money on the card in order to get it. And as I make this video, a 12-month subscription is only about $60. So that's about a $30 rebate that you get for spending uh, $3,000 on the card. Not nothing, but not all that great either. Okay, so if you rack up a bunch of points on the PlayStation credit card, what can you do with them? Well, you can redeem them at the Sony Rewards catalog or Sony Rewards store, and that means that you can get PlayStation games and game codes. You can get controllers. You could even get a whole console. PlayStation is owned by Sony, so you also have the option to get Sony stuff. So you can get Sony electronics, you can get movies and other things as well. There's also the ability to bid on certain special packages. Those can be things that are pretty interesting and maybe sort of one-of-a-kind stuff, but you usually won't get as good a value for those packages because when they are, you know, auctions that many people want to get their hands on this stuff, they tend to go higher, and so you pay a good amount. You might not be getting your penny per point on those auctions like you would for all of the other things in the Sony store. And then a few last points about the PlayStation Visa. It's issued by Comenity Bank, a bank that is also known for issuing many other retail store credit cards. Comenity has a little bit lower standard in terms of who it might approve, which means if your credit score is not sterling, you still might get approved here, even if maybe you would get denied for other bank credit cards out there on the market. The card does have instant approval as a possibility. It's certainly not guaranteed, but many people will be instantly approved approved for the card, some people may have to wait. In terms of the interest rate that you could get, it is possible that you could be approved 
at a rate as low as 13.99%, or you could be approved at 19.99% or 22.74%, depending on your credit history. And that is as of the date of this video. So those uh, credit card interest rates could change. So what I think of the PlayStation Visa overall, meh. It's okay. If you are someone that is very heavily into PlayStation and you are regularly making purchases, well then that 5% or those five points per dollar on your PlayStation purchases are pretty nice, but otherwise you're getting that 3% on cell phone bills, but everything else is only a 1% reward and everything else is a lot of stuff. So it's not like there are a lot of categories where you're doing better than 1% and there are a lot of other credit cards on the market where you could be getting more than 1% on pretty much everything that you buy. So this might be a card that you hold as sort of a complimentary card to other credit cards that you have just to get that 5% on your PlayStation purchases or to get that uh, rebate on your PlayStation Now purchases. So it makes some sense, but it certainly would not be my choice as an everyday credit card for all of my purchases. Probably even if I was someone that was very into PlayStation, I don't know that this would be my number one card. But it might be a card that you want to hold for the reasons I just said, and you never know when and other things are going to come up that are PlayStation related that would be you know exclusive to PlayStation card holders so it might be a card they don't use very often but you keep it going you know just enough to get access to whatever might come down the line so not a great card but if you're a really a uh, PlayStation fan it could make sense for you that's it for this video got any questions or comments put them in the comment section below otherwise I thank you for watching and we will see you next time